Welcome back guys, my name is Danny Burke, that's me, that's my name, I don't have any other identity, but some people do. Some people lead not one, but multiple different lives. They have different names, different jobs, and different reasons for doing it. Their stories are fascinating, and a little bit creepy. This is the top 10 people who led double lives. If you like this shirt, then you can head on over to mostamazingshop.com to get this, and a bunch of other different merch that we have, and it's all most amazing, and it's all great, so make sure you check it out right after this video. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Frank Abagnale Jr. It might not be fair to say this man led a double life, he led a lot more than that. As a teenager in the 60s, he used fake names and dodgy checks to commit serious bank fraud, earning him thousands of dollars. At the age of just 16, he managed to fool an airline into letting him fly as a co-pilot. He eventually clocked over a million miles with them. He then continued to use his fake identities to become a teacher, then a doctor, and then finally an attorney, none of them which he was qualified to do. At age 22, he was eventually caught by the FBI in France, printing out fake checks. He was in prison for 12 years and then released on the condition that he would help the FBI catch other criminals just like him. His autobiography was turned into the 2002 movie Catch Me If You Can, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks. Next up at number 9 now, we have Anna Chapman. In 2010, a whole load of Russian spies and operatives were exposed in the US. One of them was Anna Chapman, or as her family in Russia knows her, Anna Vasilyevna Kushyevna. She set up a real estate business in New York which employed about 50 people. She dated a local restaurant owner and lived a normal American life. Nobody suspected she was actually a Russian operative. Even her own American husband had no idea. When she was finally caught, some of her intimate pictures from her Facebook made their way around the internet. She posed for Playboy and was then traded for American prisoners from Russia. Upon returning to Russia, Anna was showered with medals and awards. My life isn't quite quite as exciting as that, I have to admit. Next up at number 8 now, we have John Wayne Gacy Jr. If you lived in Illinois during the 1970s, you might have known this man as a respected businessman, a community activist, and also a clown. He went by the name Pogo the Clown, and would entertain kids at their parties. However, this wasn't his double life. During all of this time, he was actually a serial killer. From 1972 to 1978, he killed an estimated 33 teenage boys and a young man. Many of them were tortured as well. He became known as the Clown Killer, and was eventually caught, sentenced to death, and executed. Coming in at number 7 now, we have John Leonard Orr. This one is pretty crazy. John was a fire captain and fire investigator in LA during the 70s and 80s. It was his job to figure out how fires started and how to prevent them in the future, and he was very good at it, receiving multiple promotions. Well, incredibly, it turns out that a lot of those fires were being caused by John Orr himself. By day, he would investigate fires, and by night, he would start them. The fires he started resulted in millions of dollars of damage and claimed the lives of four people. He was eventually caught thanks to a fingerprint found at the site of a failed fire. He was sentenced to life in prison. Next up at number 6 now, we have Jake Rush. He was a straight shooting conservative republican who was known in Florida as an attorney, a sheriff's deputy, and a congressional candidate. Oh, and he was also a cocaine vampire. I forgot to mention that one. That's right, Mr. Rush was part of the Mind's Eye Society, a group of adults who acted out their make-believe fantasies away from the public. Public eye. The character he played and wrote about was called Chaz Darling, a vampire rapist who loved cocaine. At the time, some people said, hey, every adult has a right to be as messed up as they want behind closed doors, and while you could argue that, Mr. Rush's political opponents jumped on this story when it came out and tore him to shreds. They really sank their teeth in like vampires. Coming out at number 5 now, we have Matthew K. He was a high school teacher in New York who started skipping work in 2004. The school just thought he was sick, but it turns out he wasn't sick, he was taking time off to be a wrestler. He went by the name Matt Stryker, and this character would fight people in the ring as a teacher. At one point, he even appeared on WWE Smackdown. Amazingly, nobody at the school even noticed for months. When they finally found out, he quit his job and went full-time as a wrestler. That is a hard act to follow for the next teacher. Moving on to number 4 now, we have Leland Yi. He was a California senator who made a name for himself speaking out against gun ownership. After a mass shooting in 2013, he said nobody in California should own an assault rifle and there was no further discussion
information needed. A year later, Mr Yi was arrested after he was found by the FBI to be part of a criminal gang that was smuggling guns into America. I mean, you actually couldn't write this, could you? Apparently, he was gun smuggling so that he could pay off his campaign debt after running for mayor. Haven't checked yet, but I don't think he won that. Next up at number 3 now, we have Attila Ambrus. He was a hockey player in Hungary. His position was in goal and the truth is, he wasn't very good. Maybe he just wasn't putting in as much practice as his teammates. To be fair though, he was a little bit busy because when he wasn't playing hockey, he was a bank robber, known as the whiskey robber. In 1983 alone, he robbed 29 establishments and would often leave flowers behind as a sort of apology to the staff. The government wasn't very well liked at that time, so the whiskey robber became a kind of Robin Hood hero to the people. He was eventually caught in 1999 and released in 2012. Apparently, he now makes pottery. Of course he does. That's the next logical step. Hockey player, bank robber, Potter. Alright, at the number 2 spot now, we have Tor Heden. In 1951, the Swedish town of Saxtorp was being plagued by an axe murderer. The people put their trust in police officer Tor Heden to solve the case. He was the best person in the world to figure out who that axe murderer was because it was actually him. He had been committing crimes in the town for 8 years that had all led up to the murder of a man who was actually a friend of his. A while later, his girlfriend dumped him and Heden just lost it. He kidnapped her and threatened her life. The police fired him and then he lost it even more, killing his parents, his ex-girlfriend and 5 people in an old people's home. Finally, he drowned himself in the lake and left a note behind explaining that he was the killer. I think at that point, people were probably starting to have their suspicions. And finally at number 1, we have Reverend Sean Harrison. As you guys might tell from his title, this was a Christian minister. He also worked as a school dean and an anti-violence activist. At the weekends, he mainly just, you know, worked as an enforcer for local drug dealers. That's right, he had a bunch of younger drug dealers working underneath him. He managed to hold down all of these jobs for a while before getting in trouble for pushing a student at school. They were just about to fire him when something a lot worse surfaced. A video of him shooting a student in the back of the head. You heard me right, the student was one of his dealers and luckily he survived and testified against him. Reverend Sean Harrison was swiftly arrested and convicted for the shooting, not the pushing. Alright guys, well those were some pretty crazy stories about people who led double lives. Do any of you guys lead double lives? Are you going to tell me? Probably not. Let me know what kind of story type videos you want to see next on the channel. My name is Danny Burke. Thank you for watching as always and I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>